Ladies and gentlemen, I have an incredible piece of content for you today. You see, chess AI has been better than human beings for over 25 years, since the year 1997, when Deep Blue defeated Garry Kasparov, who was the best player in the world at the time, and widely regarded by many as the GOAT. Since then, the gap has only gotten bigger. AI embarrasses human beings in chess every day, but we humans persevere. And also, humans are perverted. We are demented. We are deviant. So we have now created chess artificial intelligence bots that play the worst move mathematically possible on the chessboard at any given moment. A couple of months ago, I made a video called The Worst Chess Game Mathematically Possible, where we paired two of these AIs against each other. But in today's video, we have a human being taking on the worst fish bot, which was a human invention. And uh, this is going to really blow your mind. Let's jump into the game. So I was scrolling on Reddit one morning, like we always do when we lay in bed. And I saw this game by a person named Cautious Seat, who's getting an honorary Grandmaster title. And he's playing against Worst Fish, who does, doesn't really have an ELO. All Worst Fish does is play the worst move at the board at any, on the board at any given moment. So that first move is G4. The Grob is actually the worst move according to Stockfish, according to any top engine that you could possibly play. The good news is Cautious Seat, who is a 2000 rated player, responds in turn with the move G5. This is called the Double Grob. It's uh, not a very original name. And now White has many moves, but the worst move by far is Knight to H3. What's interesting is that the move F4, which loses a pawn in front of the king, is actually not... According to Stockfish, it's even worse. So worst fish maybe isn't as good. I mean, I don't know, because knight to h3 seems like a very bad move, uh, but f4 is considered a bad move as well. And here black plays h5. So <laughs> already very weird stuff. Now, how do you actually defeat the worst AI, right? I mean, that, that's, that should be easy. Defeat the worst AI, you play the best move, it plays the worst moves. Yeah, but anybody can do that. Even the local chimpanzee at a zoo can do that. So knight to f4. That is definitely the worst move in the position because it loses a knight, right? There is no other way for white to lose any material here other than playing the move knight to f4. And cautious seat plays pawn takes f4, okay? Pawn takes f4 because you want to be up a little bit of material, and now white plays f3. And the point of f3 is that black should now proceed to take or to play in the center with the move e5, and at this point, worst fish would just get mated, right? It, it, it would just allow a checkmate. It would go here and allow queen takes h4, uh, queen h4 mate. Uh, but our protagonist, Cautious Seat, is a very intelligent individual and plays h4. Do you know why they did that? So that the computer could not blunder checkmate. That was very brilliant, actually, because Worst Fish is programmed to self-destruct. So by preventing it from self-destructing, it now has to play chess against you, right? And the worst move in the position here for white, one of many, is just to simply develop. It doesn't change anything, and it allows h3, which would force the bishop back, and after e5, white would be in dire straits. And that's exactly what, he, what, 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 what Cautious he does. He plays e5, but g5 now. Another very bad move, giving up a pawn, giving up an attack on the bishop, at which point, again, black's attack would be simply too much. But we are trying to beat the worst AI in the world. We are not trying to bully the worst AI in the world. It's a conundrum. How do you defeat something that is trying to lose? Fascinating stuff. F5. Now the computer plays King F2 because it's not supposed to develop any pieces. It's just supposed to make the worst move possible. But what it was not prepared for was Cautious C doing the exact same thing, King to F7, also developing its king. King to G1, making the evaluation even worse. King to G7, and at this point, Worst Fish says, take my pawn, you idiot, please. And actually, taking the pawn's not even the best move. The best move is H3, obviously, and Queen G5, because in chess, you are supposed to win. But how are you really supposed to win if one side is trying to lose? Are you actually a winner if you help the other person get their desired result? You see, normally, what you don't understand, my friends, is you are playing a chess game against the person that wants to win, and by winning against somebody that wants to win, you take away their desired result. But what if you play somebody that wants to lose? Then is beating them the right result? Or is losing to them the right result? It's a fascinating conundrum. D6. 
The computer goes back with the king because it's not supposed to develop any pieces and now it moves its queen one square, taking away its own king's oxygen and basically saying, please capture my king. Knight to h5. Cautious seat is not to be denied. Develops the bishop. Undevelops the bishop back to the home square. Now, by playing like this, b4. At some point, cautious, uh, at, at some point the computer is going to get a little bit frustrated and it's not going to continue repeating moves back and forth. So it just plays pawn to b4. Once again, h3 and queen h4 is simply winning for black. But bishop to e6 is played. Now the computer undevelops the bishop to h1. And white just proceeds with the move b5. Rook to e8. Centralizing the rook in the center of the board, not doing anything in particular. Undevelops the bishop. Undevelops the king. You will also notice that worse fist just played pawn to c3. And in this position, gives its queen up for absolutely free. Like this. And after king to h8, not only does it give its... You would think giving up the queen for the bishop would be enough. It gives away the queen completely. Queen to e6. And this move is the worst move on the board because it helps black develop. Queen to e6 is literally... It, it's worse than queen d5, apparently. Because after bishop takes d5, the position is minus 10, 11. And, and, and apparently here, it, it, it's, it's, it's minus nearly 12. Apparently the bishop serves better here than here. I... I... I don't... I don't get it. I don't know. Anyway, queen e6 played, bishop e6, and now we just go back to g8. Knight g7, and worse fish gives up yet another piece. Pawn takes e5. Now, this might not be interesting to you, but it should be. It should be interesting to you because, like I said, this entire game is a puzzle. All chess is is a puzzle. It's a bunch of problem solving. It's a bunch of critical thinking. How do you beat somebody that wants to lose? Well, c4, queen takes d2. This is the way you start. But guess what? Worse fish is not going to take your queen because it's not programmed to take your queen. White plays king rook f1. It's now officially the first M on the board. M7, which is probably a type of BMW. Now we play pawn to h3. Of course, white should fight for their life, but instead they play rook to g1, and now it is m2. Bishop to h4, king f1, and any of these moves. e4, however! Now, is there a faster way to blunder a checkmate here? Bishop f1, and now it's e3, mate! Pawn to e3, what a move! Bishop f1, rook g1, the configuration, the squares taken away from the king. Pawn takes f3. Now the computer blunders checkmate in one again. Queen takes e2, or does it blunder? It's not blundering, of course it's not blundering, because it's literally programmed to self-destruct. Queen all the way back to d8. It still finds a way to get checkmated in two moves if the queen comes back and then takes the pawn. Pawn to f2. Remember, what we are trying to do is we are trying to get worse fish to play our game. We are trying to program something that is always going to play the least intuitive and the stupidest move on the board to play our game. e4. En passant is possible. It takes. Now, the best move in this position is king takes g1. Because after king takes g1, it's checkmate in three after queen d4, bishop takes, and a back rank checkmate. But the worst move on the board is not to take the queen. The worst move on the board is to play king to e2. Now it's mate here, it's mate here, it's mate here. Not in one, and in two, and one, and whatever. But now queen c8. The computer plays king to f3. We take another one of its pawns. What is black doing? What is cautious seat doing in this position? The king moves again, uh, excuse me, the knight moves again, and now queen takes g2, and bishop to g5 is a checkmate. Bishop to g5 is checkmate in one move after that. Knight to d7, just waiting. Bishop f1. Now, knight e5 is made. Queen takes knight is made in a couple of moves. But now we play pawn takes e4, giving white a couple of options. So, king takes e4 is made in three. Knight takes e4 is made in one. And king to g4 is made in one. So obviously the computer is going to play one of, one, of, one of those moves. Because they're both tied. It goes here. Why does it go there? Because it's better to not take anything. It's better to not take anything. But it goes here. Now bishop d6. If you hear any noise, by the way, my downstairs neighbors are on their second month of construction in their apartment. It doesn't, it, it doesn't even sound like they're renovating anything. It just sounds like people come there and they just turn on a jackhammer and then they leave. So if you hear that, if you don't hear anything, that's okay. Maybe I just need professional help. Rook to e1. Now, queen to g3, mate. On the board. Queen e2. Blundering the queen two different ways. And now is the story arc, my friends. Here we go. If you haven't clicked off the video yet, you, you better not. Because how are we going to defeat worst fish. 
How are we going to give it the undesirable result that it wants? King to g5 once again, black plays pawn to f3. Now white has many, many moves, many moves, but most of them lead to some sort of checkmate in one. King to h6, voluntarily walking into a checkmate like this. Bishop to g3, missing it by a square. Pawn to b6, it's trying to give away all of its pieces and it's trying to checkmate itself. Rook to e5, now it's over. Bishop f4, queen d2, rook h5, a million different checkmates. But this is actually brilliant. Rook to e5 is the most brilliant move that cautious seat could have played. Allow me to explain. The point is that now white is stalemated. White has no way of running around anything else. All white is going to do is chuck all of its pieces. And that, my friends, that is exactly what cautious seat is going to utilize. Pawn to a3. Multiple moves are mate in one, but that's not the goal. Rook c1. Now we take the pawn on b6. That pawn has been captured. White plays a4 because the objective is to just get checkmated or stalemated if you run out of moves. But a stalemate is not the desirable, not a desirable result for black. Pawn to h2. Rook to d1. We make another queen. Black now has a 41 point material advantage. Three extra queens, multiple extra knights, multiple extra bishops and rooks and pawns. Rook to a1. Pawn to b5. Remember, it's not going to take the pawn because that's the, one of the best moves. Rook to d1. We've removed yet another pawn from worst fish on the board, and now we go b5. Why are we going b5? Because now our pawns can march together. Because we know it's not going to capture any of our pieces. And we also know this has no legal moves. This has no legal moves. This has no legal moves. So it's just about these three pieces. But we also know that worst fish is not going to take anything. a3. a5. a2. b3. b2. And now just the big moment here, a4. Do you know why? Because we don't want to force it to take. We don't, do, I, I don't think you understand how absolutely brilliant this is. Black is doing this in a way that white has squares to move to that don't have anything to capture. You see, if you corner your opponent and now they start sacrificing, you don't get the maximum type of victory in the game. a4, a3, you know it's not going to take any of your pieces. B1 queen, you know it's not going to take any of your pieces. Knight B1. Knight B1, right? It's, it, it just needs empty space. Now you take. Why do you take? Because you know it's not going to take any of your pieces. Have you lost the objective of the game? Are you wondering why we haven't delivered a mate in one? That's not the point. Those of you watching this who are smart understand the point. Rook F1, queen to B7, queen to A8, pawn to A2. My friends, we now remove the last pawn on the board that had a legal move potentially in the future the pawn on g6 is not going anywhere a1 queen black is now up 70 points of material black has six extra queens black has two extra knights one extra bishop two extra pawns multiple uh, multiple other pieces e3 the pawns are going c4 those of you who are keen we you understand the objective rook a1 can be captured by no less than three queens potentially queen c7 the bishop is not going to take the queen. It's not going to take the queen. It keeps moving around. Rook to d3, queen to h3, rook to d6. Now it becomes a queen dance. All right? It becomes a queen dance. You're looking for the right move. You notice that, st that, that worst fish is trying to lose its rook. It's trying to lose its rook like five different ways. But it's not allowed to take anything because taking something would be a better move than not taking something, which would therefore lose the piece. E2. This is incredible stuff. This is otherworldly stuff. Rook to d5. We shuffle. We shuffle. We try to find an opportunity. We try to find a breakthrough. Queen to d1. F2. F1 queen. And there it is. We now have a 94-point material advantage. Black has a monstrous wall of queens. This is absolutely insane stuff. Black has promoted every possible pawn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They have nine queens. There's a queen to start with. Every single pawn has promoted to a queen. Rook a3. Queen D but now, my friends, how does black win? We've made it this far. But how does black win the game? Where's the checkmate? Do you understand where we're going with this? Queen a6. Bishop b7. We take the rook. We now have a 99-point material advantage, but how are we going to win this game? Bishop here. Queen a5. What's the plan? Well... I think what we have to realize is the second that we allow one of these two pieces to move, they will. Once you move the knight, 
This is gonna go here. You better not stalemate white. You better not take the final piece. So in this position, black finds an opportunity to maneuver their pieces in such a way around the board. Bishop to e6, queen a7, bishop f5. This is it. In this position, black defeats Worstfish. Not queen f5, which would be a stalemate. Not rook f5, which would be a stalemate. Not rook h4, which would be a checkmate. No. In this position, black plays knight takes f5 check. The king goes back. And now, in this position, with a checkmate in one, 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 and many, many, many other checkmates. Black plays knight d6 check, removing the knight from the defense of the square. The king walks up, and in this position, cautious seat with a 102 point material advantage. The highest possible material advantage because cautious seat kept the queen, the rooks, the bishops, the two knights. This is the, and, and promoted eight queens. This is the highest possible material advantage that you can have in a game and lose. If white had a knight instead of a pawn, the material advantage would be two points less. Cautious seat found a way to beat the worst chess AI on the planet by getting a maximum point disparity of a cent starting setup followed by the promotion of eight pawns into queens and still losing the game to a pawn and a king. This is an accomplishment. This right here should be celebrated. I got nothing else. Get out of here.